G'day folks and welcome to the new and improved breakdown for 2019 brought to you by Newstead Brewing Co. where we're here filming today. My name is Brendan Sauce Hotel from Queensland Rugby and joining me this Savo is commentary regular Jay Ball Staunton and South Assistant Coach Paul Brown. How are we gents? Living the dream Sauce. Pretty good Sauce. Pretty good. Now the purpose of changing up the program for 2019 is to give fans greater insight into the competition and a bit more analysis into the Premier Rugby clubs. So to kick things off Let's talk about the West Sunny Man game. Jay Ball, you're a West man. Two wins from two matches. You must be happy with how they started. Absolutely cheering, mate. Two big wins more than anything else. And it's the way they're going about it. Forwards are really dominating at set piece. They've got a very young trio at 9, 10 and 12. And they've shown that they've got the talent to be there as well. Now, mate, you mentioned youth there. Obviously, Carter Gordon coming straight out of BBC. A really good get for the club to fly half. 100%. It's been a while since West have been able to recruit that top talent out of the local clubs. And being able to get a get like Carter Gordon is absolutely massive. I thought he uh, might have been a bit fragile going in there early on, but he showed that he's got the wares to be there. Now, mate, there's a lot of new faces in the club this year. Not just Carter, but a host of new blokes in the back line. Who's impressed you so far this year? I think Hunter paisama has been awesome. He's come up from the Melbourne Rising. He's been in that NRC setup, and with such young guys inside him, he's shown that he's got a bit of experience to him, and he's got a real hard edge, which can really cause some damage this year. Now, Paulie Sunny, mate, mate, they're busy. They haven't travelled too well in the opening two rounds, mate. But, uh, you know, what positives can we see uh, for the Sunny Bank side so far? Yeah, I think with Sunny Bank, obviously, they had a whole flock of new players come through. I think the key for them will be Tom Lucas moving forward. Um, he obviously played Sheldon Tiernan's there. He's been a part of the Queensland Country setup. So he brings that, I guess, that, that added professionalism to, to, to the young Sunny Bank team that, as they've rebuilt uh, towards. Um, you know, the back end of uh, 2019. So I think it'll be real key for them moving forward. Now, Jay, as a West man, uh, you know, we can all be happy with what we've seen on the field, but um, I saw some photos floating around on Facebook of uh, some back to school antics uh, off the field. Any insights into uh, to what went on on Saturday night, mate? Uh, not that I think I'm allowed to say this is going on social media, right? Okay, if that's the case, then I don't think there's anything really left to say to be really honest with us, but it was a fun night. Right, so heading into the next match, East v GPS, obviously, you know, good rivalry with the two clubs playing for the Cromwell Cup. As an East man, I was worried heading into this one. Uh, G pulled on point a couple of weeks ago against Sydney Uni for, for the Tigers side. We're missing our starting front row from last year, Kelvin Sande, Richie Asiata, Jack Fram, who's out with a broken arm. You know, there's some key blokes out for the home side and... If I was a betting man, I probably would have to put my money on Jeeps. But the Tigers boys came through with the goods. So I was stoked with the win. Uh, what did you guys take out of that match? But I thought it was just typical uh, Tiger mentality. Backs up against the wall. You know, nothing to lose, everything to gain against a star studded Jeeps team that took City Uni out a couple of weeks before. So I just think that they took the opportunity that was at hand and when they got the result, obviously, uh, Muji would have, would have been well into them. A seven day turnaround to be able to, to correct the wrongs of the week before, and, and they did that. Uh, Jay, it was Mud Bowl 2019 out of Tigerland, mate. Obviously, kicking proved to be the difference in this match. We saw a couple of weeks ago, DP delaying. He essentially kicked Jeeps to that Australian Club Championship, but he missed some key ones this weekend, whereas Eli Peel stepped up for the Tigers. Yeah, Eli Peel's cucumber boy, as in cool as a... Eh? He had to nail that one with a couple of minutes to go, 40-odd metres out. And DP DeLong missed one from right in front early on as well. So he had a really bad day with the boot. But more than anything, it was the turnaround from the week before. The kicking game against university was almost non-existent. It was poor decision making, it was poor execution from the Tigers, and a week later they utilised the wet weather and they absolutely out Jeeps Jeeps at home. Now, I'm sure Jeep will turn around and they'll come to it. They look good in terms of their performance from the Australian Club Championship match. But I mean, I think the Tigers had a 16th man on the field there. You know, you played against the Paulie and obviously so the coach against it there as well. Jay, you've seen it there on game day, mate. How massive is that X crowd for the Tigers from Grey side? Mate, they're absolutely feral, and I love it. It's fantastic, and you can see it in the broadcast itself. They absolutely go off, and if they're doing anything 10 metres either side of that, being a line out, a kick, a goal, whatever it may be, you cannot help but think that that gets in the ear of the Chiefs players, big time. The Arkansas, uh, they're really brutal, and they... Where the stands are, they sit right on top of the field, so you almost feel like they're right on top of you, whether you're playing or, or trying to run on messages. And messages come sometimes can get distorted because there's you know they're yelling more pleasantries at you from from, <laughs> from the sideline, but and that's what's to expect, and it adds to the atmosphere. Well, I think if you actually go back and look at the vision, 
there's a couple of line outs that are pretty key to keep right in front of them and the boys are feeding the jeff. <laughs> oh big time. It was absolutely brutal. It was. It's like the zoom with the line of this. I'm sure the boys will like that one. I like that tag. Now, if we're uh, if we're talking about a one point ball game, you guys should have been there earlier in the day. East fourth grade, five three win. What a classic match. Jeez, it sounds like an absolute blood driven match to be really honest. Five three. Five three. Wow. Know. I heard it was absolutely humbling and amazing. Yeah. Did you score that fourth point or Oh, I'd like to think of myself as uh, blitzing down the wing, mate. Uh, but no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was one in the point. <laughs> Five three in a fourth grade match. One for the ages. Yeah. One for the ages. Got it. I missed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So moving on to our third match from round two: Bond versus UQ, the university clash. Now this isn't a result I probably wouldn't have picked. I, I thought it'd be close, and Bond would have a chance to get up. But to put thirty-two points on UQ. After the way the students came out and played in round one, you know, I really wasn't expecting that result. Well, to be brutally honest, I don't think the students were that impressive in round one. East were really bad, and the students were good without being great. Whereas that Bond versus Brothers game to kick off the season was an absolute belter. And I was picking Bond to get up, probably not by that amount, but I definitely see Bond as being a very dangerous team this year. Now, boys, what are the key players in this? I think one of the best highlights from the round. Former Tom and International, scoring down the line, brushing off Will Eady. Tell us about this one, Paulie. Well, the men against boys stuff, really. Um, Bowler Carlo just had a bit of space and he really just turned Will Eady inside out and then gave him one nice fin to the face and probably something you don't want to see too often if you're Will Eady, but if you're, if you're Bowler, you just replay, replay. <laughs> <laughs> so another great try from this match. Club captain, Nick Turner, the hooker, getting over from running about 15 metres out. That's a big effort for a hooker, isn't it? That's a massive effort for a hooker. If that's 15 metres for a front row, that's 50 metres for a winger. And he just saw the gap, stormed through. It took him about 20 odd seconds to get there, but he got there in the end and it was a belter. Speaking of Jay Ball earlier, the reaction is probably what got me even more fired up with uh, with Blythe, uh, obviously getting his arms out to the side like one pterodactyl. <laughs> they were extinct. <laughs> Now, Jay, one of Bond's best last year, Harry Nusifora, obviously had a belter of a season in sort of his first full season in the under 20 system. What have you made of uh, his performances in the opening two rounds? Nussie's been absolutely amazing. He's had to take over the captaincy, which is something that I think fits him really well. He's great with ball in hand. He's great uh, off the shoe, both on the team with an off it. I think he's absolutely massive for this side, and if they're going to be pushing for finals this year, he needs to be firing in the first two round shows. Nussie's going to have a big year. Yeah, I agree with Jay Ball there, Sauce. He has a real great temperament about it and the way he plays. And, and you look at the way sides are built these days, they're really built around that nine. They're almost more important than the team. They really drive the team around with the contour between the forwards and the backs. So I've just really loved what he's done in the first couple of rounds. And, and hopefully he's not up to standard when he plays South. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of South. <laughs> Probably a sore point for you this week, mate. Going down to Brothers, probably never a fun thing for any club, mate, but you got to give it to them. The brethren look good. Mate, they really did. The young outfit that came out to Gypsy Wood in you know, first home game for us, and we really wanted to put on a good performance. And then, um, you know, the, the sprinklers came on, and it was a bit of, a bit of, a bit of rugby, and um, probably suited the Brothers style a bit more. And, and a fair credit to them, they, they, they really played their style of footy. I've um, had a couple of young debutants as well. They really shone through and, and showed what they could do at this level. So um, they'll be definitely one to watch, and especially off the back of their season last year. They've really improved, um, improved two times. Now, speaking of young talent, young fella on debut for Brothers on the Weekend, Byron and Ronnie Ralston. What an absolute cracker and run on start for the brethren. Yeah, 100%. Just youngster coming through, as you said, run on start. To be able to do the inclusions and, and the little plays he did in wet weather at Chipsy Wood is a big, big thing. And I think he took it to him uh, pretty bloody well. That's right, two involvements. And one was a try assist and the other one was a try. And, uh, you know, I was walking around like Colin McGregor wondering, who the, is that guy? Um, <laughs> you know, when, after he... Just just a real key clutch clutch performance from a young fella that really just slotted in and, and took his opportunity with both hands. Now, Harry Wilson, that number eight for Brothers, he was the VPA man of the match. This fella just gets better every time he takes a footy pitch. And he does, and he's, um, he looked like he's put on a few, a few, few kilos of, of muscle, and I was thinking, geez, the Reds have obviously been hitting the tin. So, and, and he made his, his carries into contact were real impressive, and his work uh, off the ball as well was super impressive. Yeah, Harry Wilson's an absolute gun. You can see why he was signed to a Reds contract 
not only off the back of last season, but the, the potential that he has. He's so big, but so skillful. I mean, that offload that he can do is just absolutely game changing. If you can add him into a back line or whatever it may be, he adds another element to it. He's an absolute superstar. Now, from a South perspective, Paulie, mate, what do you guys reckon you need to focus on in the coming few rounds, mate, to, to improve on that performance and, and get back in the winning circle? Yeah, I think it's just for us, it's real clarity around some, some systems and. Um, especially in our attack and, and just identifying uh, some key areas that we want to improve on and making sure that we execute on those things uh, come game day. So, and, and obviously, we've got a relatively new house combination and Jackie Strong taking the helm this year. So just giving them time and seat to be able to, to feel comfortable and be able to command his troops around the field. So overall, fellas, it's been a pretty interesting opening two rounds. Some results have sort of gone either or from what we probably would have picked. But uh, overall, how much have you enjoyed the first two weeks? I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, obviously, barring the result from last week. But uh, other than that, watch the, watch the other teams go hammer and tong. And, and the results just speak to, to how close the competition is this year. Uh, fair reflection of how it was um, last year. But I think teams have recruited really well. And, and the gap between the, the top teams and, and those that were mid to, to, to lower the table last year has really shortened up. Yeah, uh, following on from what Paulie B said, you know, last year was probably the most even and tightly contested competition in a decade, if not the turn of the century. And I think it's going to be very much the same again this year. You can't pick one winner from one week to the next. There's been a lot of player movement. There's different styles of footy coming from all different coaches. So I think it's going to be an exciting year, and I can't wait to see how it pans out. All right, awesome. Well, you know, as we throw forward to round three, this weekend's match of the round is going to be the clash between Norse and Sunny Bank. Obviously, two teams both still hunting for a win. What do you guys reckon we can expect out of uh, these two sides if we get into round three? Two very hungry sides. Both sides obviously win this thus far. I mean, obviously, Norse had the buy in the weekend, but. This could be very much make or break for these two sides. I, I can't help but think that these two sides may be down the bottom end of the table, but that doesn't mean they don't have talent. They've got superstars across both uh, 15s. Um, and I think it's going to be an absolute bloodbath. They're going to be two really, really scrappy sides trying to find um, a hard fought win. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's a momentum thing, right? And sometimes you just need that first win to be able to kickstart the season. And for one of these teams, that will change and that will happen this weekend for that's it for this week. Thanks for joining me, Paul and Jay. You love it, Sauce. Thanks for having me, Sauce. All right, folks. As always, make sure you get out and support your club this weekend. But if you can't make it to a match, make sure you head to redsrugby.com.au where we got all four games streamed live and free. In the meantime, stay tuned for more club footy content via the Queensland Premier Rugby Facebook page.